All right, so it's been about 20 minutes since this truck left, probably 40 minutes since this truck left. Getting close to when we got to get on this thing because we got quite a bit of stamping to do, almost a thousand square feet. So we're getting this part ready. It's a little soft still, but we're going to try it. We're going to try to at least come down this edge. Maybe we don't have to step on them yet and we at least get that edge laid just to get ahead of the game a little bit because right now the sun's not out. If that sun pops out, the temperature's going to go up 10, 15 degrees right here. So we're going to see what we can do, see how it feels and get going. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So today what we're going to talk about is some of the things that go through my mind about when we do these larger stamp patio slabs. Especially like today in the middle of the summer when it's 90 degrees out, you know, and you know that you've only got a certain amount of time from when you start to when you finish uh, before the concrete just sets up and gets too hard. So there's a, there's a fine line between the concrete being a little too soft to start and then it being a little too firm to start and you're too late and then you're going you're gonna to be late on the whole thing. So that's what we're figuring out right now. Um, because it's because of the size of this thing and because it's August it's in the middle of the summer it's already you know at, at nine o'clock in the morning it's already about 90 degrees so what we're thinking is you know what I'm thinking is number one I want to make sure I have enough guys here you know in case we really got a hustle on this thing so there's there's the the three of us me Darren and Luke which is our normal crew and then Eric there in the fluorescent green he's a school teacher but he works for us in the summers, so there's really a, f a four-man crew of us in the summer. And then Harvey right here in front of you kind of doing the funny float mag, he works for himself. But whenever we whenever we call him and ask him to come help us on a job, he always comes and helps, you know, at least for the poor. And then if we need him to hang out and help finish, he, he'll do that too. So we got five really experienced guys here today on this stamp thing. And... I'd rather have one too many guys than, than one not enough at the end of the day. So we're just getting going. Now, It's what we've determined is it's still fairly soft. It's, it's pretty recent. It's about 45 minutes after the pour. But it's about an hour and 15 minutes or so after this first truck. So when there's two trucks on the pour, obviously the first truck's been sitting there a little bit longer than the second truck. And you can kind of see that in how the, like the bleed water, like the sheen on the surface has dried up on this first truck compared to the second truck on the left. So we're trying to get a jump on this thing. And what's, what's good about this slab is there's access to three sides. There's pretty good access to it. So we can get up right on this front edge, you know, really, but from the outside if we had to. But it's just firm enough up there where we started so we can... We can just walk on it really carefully using these our shoe-in flat-soled shoes to kind of distribute some of the weight of our feet. And what I'm doing, I'm the guy, I'm the guy on the skids there out there magging. I'm just mag floating out the surface, you know, working up a little pace, working up a little cream, getting out those bull float lines, making sure the surface doesn't have any crazy bad defects in it, you know, little rock holes or whatever the bull float didn't get. So I'm just out there kind of kind of working that up as the concrete's starting to set up here. And right now, uh, Harvey's way in the background. He's going around with an edger, just rounding the edge off. And then that's Darren on the stamps with Eric and Luke kind of kind of putting down the tinted release liquid. We're using a liquid release today and passing him the stamps as we go. So, you know, it's, it's just all about a big teamwork kind of plan here and in action trying to get going and I'm moving you know I'm on the mag I'm doing the mag floating thing just trying to stay ahead of them a little bit so they can continually spray out the liquid release as they move but I can't get so far ahead of them that I get out into that really soft stuff which is which is about where I am now that's why you don't see me out there anymore I had to jump off for a minute let that second truck set up a little bit so that gives me time to come back and jump on the stamps with these guys and at least with what we're trying to do is at least get one row down that front edge so now we can we can start picking up and setting um, back into the basically what is going to be the, th the third row of stamps now what we did today is we own our own these are ashler slate stamps we own our own set 
but a set of these is basically like 11 stamps and that's not going to be enough to go from one side to the other it just makes stamping a little easier if you can go from one side to the other with a with a row of stamps before you have to start picking stamps up and resetting them in front it's nice to have that like that back row of stamps to go off from to help keep everything straight so what we did was the the company we buy some products from some concrete products from has their own set of these exact same stamps so we just rented it from them 200 bucks for a day so we get another 11 stamps so now we got 22 of these stamps we can use and that's just going to help you know not only give us a little more room to walk on these things as we're moving them but it's going to help keep uh keep a set of stamps in back of the ones that were setting the stamps down on the whole project as we move this thing forward from basically right to left as you're looking at it here and then we like to roll our front edge too and our back edge is up against the house we got that nine inch texture roller that's just putting texture right up against the the form and that just makes sure we got really good texture there and you can see we mix we mix just a little bit of a powdered charcoal release in with the clear liquid and that kind of gives us that effect there when we that blackish effect when we spray that liquid release on we've had pretty good luck doing that um that we, we color a couple different ways i'll talk about so far so good we've been able to keep up with it we gotta now the sun's out now we got really gotta hustle so hobby's gonna jump on i gotta mag out this second truck I'm the lightest one in the crew, so I get the I get the job of magging. We're gonna keep up with it. Alright, so like I said, there's a couple different ways we like to like enhance the color. We did add color to the concrete. We added a they just wanted what was a gray color. Usually if you don't add any color to a, like a four thousand PSI concrete, when it cures up after thirty days it kinda looks almost white. Uh, or really 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 light gray not I guess not necessarily white like that house in the background but it's really light colored so if you want it to stay like dark like a gray like this this is what I would call like a darker gray then you actually have to add gray pigment to the concrete so that's what we did and then there's a couple different ways you can enhance the color with a secondary color one is the way we're doing it here is just add a little uh, colored powdered pigment release to the liquid release that you use or if you want to you just use clear liquid release without the color in it and then come back uh, the next day and put a like what's a texture enhancer color on it it's basically like a, a color you mix with water and then you just kind of brush it on the surface and then you let it dry and that gives you like an antique-ish like color effect and I got a lot of that stuff in my where I teach you how to stamp concrete There's a link for that down below if you guys want to learn how to stamp concrete like we do and all the different you know tips and tricks and the ways that we do it um, again that link is down below you can check that out but today we just decided to go with the color in the liquid release and then as you can see the we're not having to tamp the stamps down into the concrete it hasn't gotten so firm on us yet that we need to like pound the stamps down we're getting really good texture from the stamps just by walking on them and kind of tapping them lightly with our feet and that's just you know you can tell that by feel and I guess depending on how much you weigh that could make a difference on whether you just use your feet your weight or if you use the tamper We've got a couple tampers just sitting off the video, just waiting to go if we need them. But so far, so good. We didn't really need them. Now we're getting off that first truck right now onto the second truck, and you know, luckily that second truck is just curing. It's curing up all pretty even, so it's getting to where we were when we started on the first truck. It does, and again, with five guys here and the size of these stamps, I mean, Ashler, Ashler Slate, depending on the manufacturer you buy them from, they come in, they come in some different sizes. It just so happens this manufacturer that we're using makes a pretty good size Ashler Slate stamp. Like that's, that's, you know, like three feet by three feet. So that's nine square feet to this stamp. Some of them that you buy, they only come like two by two, so that's four square feet. That's less than half this size. So you're moving twice as many stamps 
to do the same amount of square footage, which is basically what I figure that's twice the amount of work. So we like really like these bigger stamps, on, especially on these bigger patios like this. It just speeds things up, makes things go pretty fast. And basically we're just all working together as a team now. Now we're gonna work our way kind of from this corner to the left back up towards the house. There's a section, and you can see how we left, kind of left a line of those stamps in behind where we're working to the left. We left a line there. We didn't pick those up because we want them to go by as we work ourselves back up into the, into the house where there's gonna end up being a little bit of shade the way the sun's coming up this morning. And that spot's going to be the still the softest part, uh, softest part that we've hit so far. You can see we're getting really good texture. We can tell when, when you pick those stamps up with a liquid release, you can you can look at the stamp right after you pick it up and tell if you're getting a good texture or not. And if you're not, you just set it back down, put a little bit more pressure on it, tamp it a little bit if you need to, pick it back up. You can see that one little section there way on the left now in the shade. So what kind of surprised me was, you know, as hot as it is today, it's about 90 degrees right now. And the, these trucks, they had about almost an hour drive to get here, the two of them, that we were able to really keep up with this, what I would say in pretty good shape, not really even, not really even work that hard to get from one end to the other, which is, you know, I, that's, I wasn't really expecting that. I was expecting us to really have to hustle to be able to get the same, the same type of texture in the very end of this as we start with in the beginning because you know if you know if you guys know anything about concrete once it starts to set up you got a pretty small window of time before that gets too firm to get to get a really good texture in it where you're not really pounding the surface hard and what happens sometimes what happens when you have to really pound the surface hard is you know the rocks the the rocks right at the surface they'll tend to as as you as you pound them in the concrete with the stamps and try to settle them in the surface they kind of they kind of spread the surface a little bit as you pound them in there and it creates these little micro cracks in the surface versus when the concrete is softer when it's more plastic you don't get those micro cracks so it's and when those micro cracks start showing up it just i don't know it it i don't really like the looks of them at the end of the day you know when everything's all said and done so that's why you really want to keep up with your stamping and just try to get it while it's as plastic as possible if you can. So let me know what you guys think, you know, doing a slab this size and this type of heat. How do you think, could you handle it? How do you think we handled it? Uh, is this something you'd tackle or not? But So let me know down in the comments. And uh, this is kind of the, the basis of what's going to happen here. To hey, we got a 1020 right now. I mean, we probably didn't get done pouring though. Oh, I don't know, 7.45, we started 8.45, nine o'clock. So we got done pouring around 8.45 or so. It's now 10.20 and we're all stamped. So that gives you an indication how fast that goes. Middle of the summer, here it is, first of August, it's probably 90 out right now, kind of in the sun. That release is just drying up right now. That's why it looks like the way it is. So that release will dry up. We'll come back down, we'll wash it, we'll saw it, and then we'll put the sealer on it in a couple days and we'll be done here. Thanks for watching, guys.